Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back and as you can tell from the title and the length of this video, I have an epic swatch fest and review video for you guys featuring my Pat McGrath palettes. Now I have all six of the 10 pan eyeshadow palettes, the Mothership palettes, as well as the six mini palettes, the three from Holiday and the three miniature abbreviated palettes that pair up with the 10 pan Mothership palette. Now since this is a very long video, I'm gonna go ahead and leave timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to whichever part of the video you're interested in. If you wanna see a specific palette, you will be able to jump ahead I will also leave like a content list here so you can see what I'm going to cover in this video So the first thing I'm going to go through of course are the full swatches These are brush swatches for all the palettes So as I said, I'm gonna go through the 10 pan eyeshadow palettes first Then I'm going to go into the abbreviated six pan palettes that match up to each of the first three Mothership 10 pan palettes as well as the three six pan eyeshadow palettes that debuted last year for holiday that also correspond to the original original three mothership palettes and then I'm going to go into a palette breakdown where I show you the shades that are repeated in different palettes because there are some repeat shades as well as highlight the shades that are now available as singles in the eye dolls eyeshadow collection so she has single pan eyeshadows that you can pick up at your leisure they're very expensive so it's kind of more cost-effective to buy an actual palette but this way you will see what shades you can get as singles in case you're interested in just one shades because of course the palettes are themselves very expensive and then I'm going to go into a full comprehensive swatch comparison because if you have seen Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes then you know that she tends to do a lot of champagne shades a lot of bronzes even some brown shades look similar and I will show you the comparison across all the palettes so you can tell what shades are similar see which ones have different nuances because they do have differences to them but this way you can tell what palette may be best for you depending on what shades you're interested in and then after that I'm going to go into my typical five P's which is the price the packaging the purchasing the product and the performance and then I'll give you my overall thoughts at the end and if you want to see like what my favorite palette is I'm gonna do a separate video for that because this is gonna be a full swatch fest and review video and then we can get into my favorites a little bit later on now before we jump into the swatches I wanted to to bring up the one thing that most people will mention when they speak about Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes her special shades these are the shades that most people drool over those are the shades that are special to her lineup they're different from anything else on the market they make the price point worth it and while I'm going through the swatches you'll see little stars that indicate those special shades but you can also tell her special shades from the names of the eyeshadows if you see astral blitz VR or a three digit number like 003 or 005 those are her special shades so that's how you can tell which shades are special apart from them being glittery and glorious and just beautiful I will also go ahead and indicate single eyeshadows with a ding so you can see how those swatch with a brush in case you're interested in picking up the singles there are two key things to make note of when going through this swatch fest and review video and those are one there are only special shades in the 10 pan mothership eyeshadow palettes so if you wanted to try out the special shades at all you would have to purchase the larger 10 pan eyeshadow palettes because she doesn't include special shades in the abbreviated six pan palettes and the second thing is that many of the shades that are now available as singles in the idol eyeshadow collection are taken from the six pan abbreviated palettes and from the limited edition 10 pan mothership eyeshadow palette that was available for holiday which is mothership for decadence so if you already own a couple of the six pan eyeshadow palettes and even the holiday 10 pan eyeshadow palette you may already have quite a few of these shades in the palettes that are now available as singles but since this is already a long video and there is a lot to unpack let's go ahead and get straight into to the swatches. For the swatches, I'm applying them over a light layer of Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in a genie bottle. Do you remember this? So old school. And for the brushes, I'm using the Sigma Eye Shading Brush, which is the E55. 
We're starting off with the Mothership One palette, which is subliminal. This is a collection of 10 richly pigmented shades, including breathtaking blues and violets, polymorphic jewels, lustrous golds, and iconic matte neutrals. The first shade up is Skin Show Nude. This is described as a champagne platinum. This applies as a light champagne gold with a hint of peach. Then we have the shade Depth. This is described as an ash brown and it has a matte finish. This is a smooth, medium tone dark brown with a neutral undertone. Next up is Ultimate Taupe. This is described as a soft beige brown. This is a really smooth, matte, medium tone brown. It has more of a neutral undertone. As you can see, it has a slight gray tint. Then we have the shade Pale Gold 002. This is described as a cool platinum gold. This is one of the special shades and it's really beautiful. It's a light yellow gold shade. It has intense sparkle, but it doesn't look like any chunky shimmer. It's just very shimmery. Then next to that, we have VR Violet. This one is described as a pinky violet duochrome. This is also one of the special shades, but it's not as pigmented as Pale Gold 2. It's a beautiful duochrome violet with a blue shift. It is gorgeous. This works well over dark shades or just to accent the eyes. Then we have the shade extreme black this is described as an ultimate black this is just a rich matte black it's very smooth and it applies really nicely it's great for darkening up the crease or you can use it as a base color for the special shades to intensify them and really amplify the duochrome and shimmer to them then we have the shade lilac dusk this is described as a muted lavender it's more of a frosty finish but it's very sheer and it's not my favorite shade in the palette at all you definitely need to pack this on or apply it with a damp brush. Next to that we have Substance. This is described as a cool beige brown. This also has a shimmery finish and it's really beautiful. It is a muted mid-tone brown shade with shimmer to it. It's more of like a really micro fine silver shimmer that gives it that cool neutral undertone. Then we have Blitz Blue. This is described as a vivid sapphire. This is one I have to take a moment for you guys to look at. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my god. This is a beautiful sapphire blue. It is one of the special shades as well, but it is very pigmented as you can tell. It has a great solid blue base and then sparkly blue shimmer to it. It is so breathtaking. In some lights it can come off a little bit purple, but it's definitely a rich like sapphire blue. It's gorgeous. And then last up we have Astral White, which is described as a white with a blue flash. This is another one of the special shades. It's a sheer shade, so it's going to be more of a topper shade. But it is a pale icy blue with a little bit of a pinky violet shift, but not too much. It's just a very icy blue. So here you have all the 10 shades from the Mothership One palette. This is definitely a palette with more neutral and cool undertones. A lot of the shades are taupes or they lean more on the bluish side except for Pale Gold 2. But they're really gorgeous. The only one that I really am not the biggest fan of is Lilac Dusk. Moving on to Mothership 2, this is the Sublime palette. So this palette has 10 richly pigmented hues including fiery coppers, poetic pinks, polymorphic jewels, brilliant bronze, and iconic matte neutrals. The first shade up is Skin Show Glow, which is described as a champagne pink pearl. This requires some layering up. It's a sheer shade. It does come off as a pale champagne pink shade. It's more of a satiny frost shade versus a metallic frost shade. Then we have Copper Toned. This is described as a soft reddish brown. This again is more of a satiny shade versus some high metallic shine. And it has decent pigmentation, but I have to build it up to get great color payoff. This is more of a coppery orange shade. It definitely doesn't seem to have any brown to it. It's definitely what I'd consider a pure coppery bronze. Then we have Iconic. This is described as a neutral bronze gold. This is a beautiful medium brown bronze shade with a little bit of a golden shift to it. It's really gorgeous and it's really smooth and it builds up nicely. 
Then we have Bronze 005. This is described as a metallic warm brown. This is the first special shade in the palette, and for me this comes off as an orangey, like a bright orangey carrot gold. It's really gorgeous, but it's a little bit sure you'd need to build this up or just use it as a topper shade. Then we have the shade VR Nectar. This is described as a peachy pink with gold pearl. This is an extremely gorgeous crystal shade. It's like a bright yellow gold with a pink shift. It's so amazingly gorgeous. And you can definitely see that the bronze is more of an orangey gold compared to VR Nectar, but they're both gorgeous. I just love VR Nectar a lot more. And again, we have Extreme Black, which is just a matte black, and this is included in all three of the Mothership palettes. So I'm just gonna swatch it and keep it moving. Next up is the shade Dark, which didn't even get the honor of having a special creative name, but this is described as a rich, warm brown. This is a matte red toned brown. It's more like a medium deep shade and I do need to layer it up to get great color payoff but on the eyes it applies really nicely, really smoothly. It's a great shade to deepen up the crease especially in warm looks. Then we have Rose Dusk. This is described as a soft reddish mauve. This for me is more like a sheer reddish copper shade or like a cranberry. It's sheer, it's more satin than metallic, it's not my favorite shade in the palette. In fact, this is my least favorite of the whole 10. Then we have Blitz Emerald. This is described as a blackened green with lilac pearl. This is another one of the special shades. It's like a dirty emerald green with a blackened purple shift to it. It's also very gorgeous. If you're into greens, this is definitely a unique one. And then last up we have Astral Ghost Orchid. This is described as a white iridescent with pink. This ghost is living up to its name because it is barely showing up on my skin. You just see a very pale pinky sheen on my skin. It's pretty, it definitely needs layering up. It definitely needs a base shade to really amp up that color. But it's a good shade to like pop on the inner corner or to layer over some of these other shades. But on its own, it's not an impressive shade at all. So here again, we have the 10 shades in the palette. My least favorite shade is the third from the left, which is Rose Dusk. It is just not an impressive shade at all. And then second runner up is Astral Ghost Orchid. It's almost like, okay, you're a special shade, you're a share, you're a topper. But like, do I need you though? Because you're really not doing much for me. The winners in this palette for me would definitely be VR Nectar and then Blitz Emerald. Those are just really gorgeous topper shades. The other shades are, eh, they're okay. Like, they're just okay. Third up is Mothership 3, which is subversive. This has 10 divinely decadent shades, including Vivid Violets, Mutational Blues, Sumptuous Greens, and Iconic Matte Neutrals. The first shade up is Skin Show Fever. This is described as a champagne gold pearl. This is a beautiful peachy champagne. It's a little bit on the more frosty side, but it's still not metallic, and it actually layers up pretty nicely. Then we have the shade Night Creature. This is described as a deep magenta. This one takes a little bit of building up, but it layers up beautifully, and it's a gorgeous chunky shimmer it looks like one of the special shades but it is a little bit different in texture because it still feels like a frosty shade but it has a lot of shimmer and sheen to it then we have deep shade uh not very creative with the name but this is described as a dark warm brown this is one of the better mattes that i've swatched so far it's a deep rich like coffee brown it has warm undertones and it's really nice and buttery and smooth with great pigmentation i mean look at that it's gorgeous Next up is Gigabyte. This is described as an antiqued green gold. This is one of the special crystal shades in the palette. And oh my god, that is so gorgeous. It looks like a tarnished greenish gold. It has great pigmentation. And it's just, oh my god, it's so pretty. Next up we have VR Pink. This is described as a peachy pink with gold pearl. This one is a little bit more sheer, but I'll build it up. It's a gorgeous peachy gold with really intense pink sheen to it. 
It's another one of the crystal special shades and it's absolutely gorgeous. That shift makes it so divinely beautiful and it's pretty decently pigmented too on its own but it definitely would work great as a topper shade. Here is Extreme Black again which is the same matte black that can be found in the first three Mothership palettes. Then we have Lazarus. This is described as a warm pinky brown. This is more of a satin frost shade again. I do not see a lot of pink to this color at all. It, it just looks like a medium tone brown with a little bit of warmth to it and it's actually pretty smooth and nicely pigmented. Then we have Black Metal. This is described as a gunmetal black with silver pearl. That applies well, but I'm just gonna build it up a little bit just to get more pigmentation. It's a beautiful deep gunmetal shade with that really fine silver glitter to it. It is also very gorgeous and with a little build up it has great pigmentation. This would make a gorgeous like wet looking smoky eye. Then we have Blitz Amethyst. This is described as a deep purple with blue pearl. This is another special shade so I'm just going to layer it up a bit just to see what the pigmentation is like. That is gorgeous. It's a beautiful medium tone purple with blue shimmer to it. And the pigmentation is pretty decent. That is gorgeous and it would look great over like a black base. And then last up we have Astral Ghost Orchid. This one is described as a white iridescent with pink flash. This one is another one of the special shades and it's also in the Mothership 2 palette, the Sublime palette, which is interesting that this would be a repeat shade for both palettes and it's just as unimpressive as it was in the Mothership 2 palette. It's just very sheer, it's not very pigmented at all. It's definitely a topper shade. So here you have it again, here are all 10 shades swatched. This palette is a sleeper palette. It isn't the palette that I would gravitate to first given all the color schemes, but it to me is the most special out of the three Mothership palettes because it has more of the special type of shades and they're all beautiful and really gorgeous. So if you like purples at all, this is probably a palette that you would absolutely love. And the majority of the shades perform well except for that last Ghost Orchid shade, which is not a complete failure. You can again use it as a topper shade because that's what it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a standalone shade, but all the other shades are really gorgeous on their own and they have great pigmentation and they layer up fantastically. Moving on to the limited edition Mothership 4 palette, which is Decadence. It says, incite a hedonistic inferno with intense saturated shades that jewel the eyes in multidimensional metallic radiance. Like a vault's worth of gemstones, this dazzling collection of flawless finishes defines and highlights the eyes, summoning the Baroque bijou in cosmetic couture. Ooh, it does sound decadent. The first shade up is gold standard, which is described as a glistening yellow rich gold. This is a smooth, really buttery, bright yellow gold. It's definitely a very intense gold. So not for the tame of heart at all. Then we have Inferno, which is described as a radiant metallic copper. This is also a beautiful coppery bronze shade. It does lean a little bit more bronze, but you can see the orangey undertone of the copper. Then we have Blue Blood. I'm gonna go with the blood part being the color. It's a deep frosted vermilion. This is a really beautiful, dark, rich, almost like a reddened plum. These shades so far are like a intense frost versus like a metalized eyeshadow. Then we have Sinful, which is described as a platinum gold. This to me is like a tarnished gold, but it's like an olivey gold with a little bit of that icy silver undertone that reads platinum. I guess that's what they were going for. It definitely is a pretty unique like tarnished gold shade. Next up is Underworld. It's described as a deep metallic matte cerulean. I don't know where they're going with metallic and matte but we'll see. This is a beautiful deep rich inky navy shade. It's really, really gorgeous. It's like a black and dark blue. 
I don't really see where they're going with the matte metallic, but I guess it's a little bit more of a flat color. It's not as high shine, so I can probably see what they mean by matte metallic. Second row, we have Sterling, which is described as a luminous polished silver. This is a beautiful, almost subdued silver shade. It's not like a foil, but it's definitely a bold silver and it has decent color payoff as well. Then we have Lapis Luxury. This is described as a frosted multi-dimensional turquoise. I have to layer this one up, but it is gorgeous. It is definitely like a darkened turquoise leaning on teal, but more on the blue side. I don't see the multi-dimension to it necessarily, but it is still a beautiful, rich, like turquoise blue. It's gorgeous. Then we have Divine Mink. This is described as a frosted gray-brown. This is my type of shade. It's so beautiful. It's like a taupey brown, like a deep taupe brown, so you see the gray undertones to it, but it also has like a hint of purple that just makes it even more interesting. It is, it, this one is really beautiful. Then we have Hedonistic, which is described as a fiery crimson. This one is also beautiful. It's like a fiery, coppery shade with a ton of pink reflect to it. It's really different. It looks like iodine again, but it's not really red, it's more like a rich fiery copper. It's gorgeous. And then last up is Enigma, which is described as a glittering gray beige. This is probably the most subtle in the palette, but it's gorgeous. It's still a very wearable, like a beige brown shade with like a silvery sheen to it. It's really beautiful. So here you have all 10 shades from the Holiday Decadence palette. Again, this was limited edition. Again, this was limited edition, but a lot of the shades have been repeated in one of the smaller Mothership six pan palettes as well as within the singles. So if you were interested in this palette and you didn't get your hands on it, you may still be able to find some of the shades in the singles or in the smaller palette. And the shades are truly beautiful. I do think it fit the jewel tone theme of the collection and they really apply nicely. None of these shades are duds. All of them have good pigmentation. They apply nicely. And they aren't overly metallic where they're just too intense for people who just want a subtle shine on the lids. But they're still shimmery enough to give that jewel tone effect to the eyes. Moving on to Mothership 5, which is Bronze Seduction. This says, adorn your eyes in sensuously surreal, incendiary shades ranging from gleaming rose gold, molten metallic bronze, and incendiary crimson to mesmerizing mattes. Starting off, we have Skin Show Divine Glow, which is described as a golden champagne. This is a beautiful light champagne shade with a little bit of golden undertone to it. It's not too strongly gold though, it's definitely a champagne. Then we have the shade Entrapment, which is described as a tawny terracotta matte. This is a beautiful medium tone RNG matte. It's definitely terracotta. It's really smooth and really pigmented as well. I really like that shade. Then we have Bronze Blaze. This is described as a glittering golden bronze. This picks up very intensely on the brush. I tried not to get that much, but it's more of like a creamy texture. So it definitely picks up a lot. It's like a fiery copper. It's really gorgeous. It has yellow gold shimmer to it. That is really, really beautiful. Then next to that, we have Rose Gold 005. This is described as a gleaming rose gold. So this is one of the special crystallized shades. It's more sheer as is expected with these shades. It's a beautiful deep like rosy peach base with golden shimmer. It's pretty, not my favorite kind of shade, but it would work beautifully in like a fiery coppery look or even like a really warm red look. Then we have VR Fire Opal. This is described as a color shifting chartreuse. This is an interesting shade. It doesn't look like much on my skin, but on the camera, it looks beautiful. So when it catches the light, it's like a light green, but it has like purple, lavender, pink to it. It's really beautiful, very interesting, and it works great as one of those topper shades. Then we have Extreme Aubergine. This is described as a blackened matte violet. This is the shift from the extreme black, and now we have a different shade in the palette. 
This is gorgeous. The shimmer that you see on that, that is just picking up from the glitter that's in the palette, but the color itself is a rich blackened um, aubergine, like a deep purple shade. Then we have Guilty Pleasure. This one is described as a silky bronzed taupe. This is a little stiffer in the pan, so you do have to go back and build it up, but it's a beautiful medium tone bronze shade with a little bit of gold and shimmer to it. It's not unique. We've seen this so far in a couple of the palettes. So this shade is one that Pat loves to include in her palettes. Next we have Disobedient. This is described as a classic matte mahogany. And this is exactly what it says. It's a matte mahogany shade, meaning it's a warm tone brown with ready undertones. It's really gorgeous and it has great pigmentation as well. Next is Blitz Flame, which is probably the most outstanding shade in the palette. This one is described as a molten metallic crimson. This is a gorgeous fiery red shade. It's really smooth too and it looks really metallic. It reminds me of like mercury or iodine. It's so gorgeous. And then last up we have Astral Luna Gold which is described as a glistening white gold. These astral shades tend to be the more sheer ones in the palette. This is definitely a topper. It's definitely a special shade. It's a beautiful like bright yellow gold with a white base, but as you can see, it's sheer. So you definitely need to use this as a topper or really build it up. So here you have the 10 shades in the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction palette. This is a palette that people went crazy over. And it's really beautiful and for good reason because it has really gorgeous shades in it. All of them apply really well except for the Astral Luna Gold. But that's the intention of that shade. It's not meant to be like highly pigmented. It's a special shade. But the red in this palette is divine. And I also think Bronze Blaze, which is that third shade on the left, spectacular shade as well. And the mattes are also very nice shades. So I do really like this palette. I think this was a winner. And if you're into those fiery kinds of shades, and some of them are different, they're interesting and unique, then this is definitely a great one to look at. Now here we have Mothership 6, Midnight Sun. This says, Elevate your artistry with captivating coppers, bold bronzes, covetable crimsons, glowing golds, and venomous violets. Mix and layer to create multi-dimensional effects as each hue releases infinitely smooth and blendable pigments with uninhibited buildability. The first shade up is Skin Show Moon Glow. This one is described as a luminous platinum peach. This one is a shimmering peachy champagne. You can definitely see the warm peachy undertones as you build it up. It's a beautiful shimmery light shade. Then we have Bronze Eclipse. This is described as a bronzed taupe sheen. This one is just a medium tone bronze with golden sheen. It has decent pigmentation and layers up really smoothly. Then we have Vermilion Venom. This is described as a burnish crimson matte. This is a smooth matte deep brick red shade. It actually applies really nicely, especially since it is a red. These can be tricky and a little bit patchy, but this layers up nicely. Then we have Blood Moon 005. This is described as a metallic copper rose. This is a very sheer glittery copper. It's taken a lot to pick it up from the pan and apply it to my skin. It definitely comes off as more of a glittery topper. This shade is something you'll probably need to use with a glitter glue or your fingers or use a damp brush because it really doesn't want to pick up and it doesn't apply very well to the skin by itself. And then we have Jubilee which is described as an antiqued glittering gold. This one is a tarnished yellow gold with a little hint of a peach undertone. Tone. Another one that's difficult to pick up from the pan and layer onto your skin. Here we have the dark matte in the palette which is Extreme Dusk. This is described as a charcoal brown matte. This is a beautiful, really pigmented matte blackened brown. It has a hint of a cooler undertone, so it'd be great to use for cooler looks. Then we have Taboo, which is described as a brown ochre matte. Taboo is a medium tone brown tan shade. 
Again, a nice one with great pigmentation. It applies really smoothly. Then we have the shade Wicked Envy, which is described as a shimmering moss green. This one is a dirty olive green with gold shimmer to it. It applies pretty smoothly and builds up nicely. Then we have Blitz Violet Orchid, which is described as a sparkling periwinkle violet. This one is a medium toned, almost muted, dirty blue based purple with silver shimmer to it. It's really pretty, but it doesn't remind me of what a Blitz shade would be. It's almost just like an elevated shimmer. And then last up, we have the Astral shade, which is Astral Solstice. This one is described as a glittering platinum. This again is a sheer glittery top coat. It's more of a silvery platinum shade, but it's very sheer and will take a lot of building up or using it damp or with a sticky base. So here you have it. Here are the 10 shades from the Mothership 6 Midnight Sun palette. I do like the three mattes in this palette. They're very nice. They apply well and they build up nicely. The shimmer shades leave a little bit to be desired and the glittery shades are just very sheer compared to the other palettes. So you'll definitely need to use them damp or with a sticky base because they're not applying well. But those shades tend to be used as toppers anywhere or accent shades. So maybe that was the intent, which is why they don't have that much pigmentation. This one is not my favorite color story and the shimmers are a little bit different from the other shimmers that we've seen in the other palettes. They're a little bit less less dense and not as impactful. Now we're moving on to the smaller six pan mothership eyeshadow palettes which are just edited versions that are following the same theme as the larger 10 pan mothership palettes. They even modify the name a little bit and remove the vowels. Did you see that? Did you guys notice that? So it's Mothership without any of the vowels. So we're starting off with the first one which is Subliminal Platinum Bronze. And of course, this one is based on the Mothership One palette, Subliminal. So this says, it's an indulgent palette of golden taupes, rich, powerful bronzes, and velvet-soaked plums that leaves lids iced in a cool riot of glamour fatale. The first shade up is Platinized, which is a silky platinum. This is a gorgeous like champagne taupe. It's so smooth and buttery. It just layers up nicely with great pigmentation. This is a great all over lid color. Then we have Smoke and Mirrors, which is described as a silky chocolate sheen. This is a dark brown shade with like just a touch of sheen to it. It's not very frosty or metallic and it almost has like sheer pigmentation, but at the same time it has decent color payoff. It's interesting because the shades that are described as sheen will have that almost kind of translucence to it and you'll see as we go through the rest of the swatches. Then we have telepathic taupe. This is described as a glittering grayish. This is also a little bit more sheer when compared to the metallic and frosty shades in the larger palettes. This is like a dirty taupe shade with golden shimmer to it. It's very fine shimmer as you can see. It's decent, it's just not my favorite color on my skin tone. Then we have the matte in the palette, which is deep velvet. It's described as a deep plum brown suede. This is a beautiful dark brown coffee shade. It has great color payoff, as you can see. And it's great for darkening up neutral looks without being black. Then we have ritualistic. This is described as a metallic mauve brown. This is a beautiful medium brown bronze shade with a hint of like a purpley undertone, like a dusty purple. It has good color payoff and it's really smooth. And then last up we have Sextrovert. This is described as a metallic bronze. Now this is more of a rich golden bronze shade. It's really beautiful as well with great color payoff and pigmentation. So here again you have the six shades in the palette. I like all these shades except for telepathic taupe. It's just not a flattering color, but it actually still works pretty well when you mix everything together. So I think this is a pretty good palette for a neutral lover. This is the Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition. Again, based on the Mothership Sublime 10 Pan Eyeshadow Palette. This one says it's an illuminating palette with a soiree of fiery coppers illicit charcoals, sensual goals, and carnal champagnes. 
The first shade up is Guilt Trip, which is described as a champagne golden sheen. This is a peachy golden champagne. Really pretty, but I feel like it looks similar to a few of the shades that we've seen so far. Then we have Bronze Struck, which is described as a warm bronze metallic. This one is a beautiful golden bronze. Again, very similar to other shades we've seen so far in the collection. But it's still smooth, pigmented, great color payoff. Third up is Copper Eyes. This is described as a vivid copper glitz. This is a beautiful creamy copper orangey shade. It's really smooth as well. It just applies really nicely with great pigmentation. Then we have Illicit. Illicit is described as a charcoal brown sheen. This one is a beautiful rich dark brown with golden glitter to it. It's very fine golden glitter, but it's going to give you a little bit more fallout, but that's a really rich pigmented dark brown. Next is Throw In Shade. This is described as a terracotta velvet. This is the only matte shade in the palette and it's really smooth, really pigmented. No skipping, no patchiness. It's a beautiful orangey medium tone brown. And then last we have Gold Rush, which is described as a glistening gold shine. Gonna add a little bit more to layer this up. This one is definitely more of a yellow gold frosty shade. Has decent color payoff once you build it up. So here again are the six shades in this palette. These lean more on the coppery or like orangey side with some warm golds tossed in. I think this is a really pretty palette as well. I really love the matte in this palette and then the copper shade. The other three shades I feel like have been done in the other palettes and these are nothing special when compared to those. Next up we have the Mothership Subversive La Bien Rose palette which is based on the original Mothership Subversive palette. This is described as a luxurious palette with an obsessively opulent melee of vivid violets, risque plums, and the euphoric glow of incendiary golds. So first up we have Pale Fire, which is described as a peachy pink duochrome. This one's a little bit sheer, so you would have to build it up if you don't want just a wash of color. It's a sheer, buildable, pinky peach duochrome but it's very light on the skin as you can see. Then we have Purple Rain, which is described as a vivid purple sheen. This one is pressed a little bit harder in the pan, so you do have to press to pick it up. And then press to also get smooth color payoff. But it's a beautiful, rich, vibrant purple, and it doesn't skip at all, it's really pretty. And then we have Gold Nectar, which is described as a peachy gold metallic. This is a beautiful metallic yellow gold. It has a little bit of copper to it as well with that orangey undertone. Then we have Paranormal. This is described as a deep plum suede. This matte is a little bit more sheer than the large Mothership palettes. So it's not my favorite. It still builds up pretty decently, but it's not like a rich, smooth, pigmented matte. Then we have Rose Risque, which is described as an ultra pink satin. Again, this shade is a little bit sheer. It's not what I would expect. I expected it to be a little bit more pigmented and intense, but it's smooth. It comes off more matte than a satin or a metallic shade. Again, not my favorite. And then last up we have Euphoria, which is described as a pink plum frost. This is a decent like purpley lilac shade with some pink shift to it. Not my favorite kind of color, but it goes with the theme of the palette. So here you have the six shades from this palette. Um, this is not my favorite palette. The saving grace would be the purple, which is gorgeous once you get it built up just right. But the other shades in the palette, the matte is like not even that impressive. The pink is so muted and unimpressive. And the other shades I can get in the other palettes. So this one is definitely not my favorite out of the smaller palettes. Then last up we have the second set of abbreviated Mothership six pan eyeshadow palettes that are again still themed around the initial three Mothership 
10 pan eyeshadow palettes so first up we have mothership subliminal dark star this one is based on of course the subliminal palette so it says blur the line between terrestrial and transcendent with glamorously intergalactic tones ranging from venusian blue violet and glittering gold to sparkling champagne and deep wine all grounded by mercurial matte neutrals calm down so the first shade we have up is Entice, which is described as a gleaming, glittery gold. Mother loves her gold, and this is another peachy champagne gold shade. This is not as smooth as the other ones. It has a little bit of flakiness to it, but it looks very similar to all the others that we've swatched so far. Then we have the matte in the palette, which is Deep Space. It's described as a smoky matte gray. Deep Space is a beautiful matte gray. Decent color payoff. It has more of a bluey undertone to it. Then we have Enraptured, which is described as a gleaming metallic gold. It's another metallic gold, as you can see. Nothing special. It's more of a orangey yellow gold as well. Then we have Dark Matter, which is described as a silky onyx sheen. This one is a beautiful, rich, velvety black shade. I really like this one. It's such a beautiful dark black without being a matte black. Then we have Metropolis, which is described as a pearlized aubergine. This one is a rich, blackened plum shade. It's really beautiful, really smooth, really pigmented. It's not really frosty or shimmery. It's just a nice sheen. And then last up we have Interstellar, which is described as an iridescent metallic blue. This one is one of the special shades. And this is the first six pan palette that we're seeing with a special shade. So she started mixing in the special shades with the second round of the six pan palettes. This specific shade is a beautiful purple with a blue shift. And you see a little pink to it as well. Really gorgeous shade. So here again, you have the six shades in the Subliminal Dark Star palette. This one is an interesting collection of colors. I don't necessarily think it's the most unique because there's a black in it, which now knocks you down to five shades. And the champagne we already have and the gold and bronze we already have. So you're left with three unique shades in this palette. But if it's a theme that you love, you might actually like this selection as well. Next up we have the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation eyeshadow palette. This one says, succumb to the seduction of six illicit iconoclastic shades ranging from glamorously glitty golds to wondrously warm matte neutrals, sparked by the tantalizing temptation of a single shimmering bronzed rose. The first shade up is Celestial. This is described as a luminous champagne. I am about sick of these champagne shades by now, but here's another one, yet another one. It's a light shimmery champagne. Then we have Burning Desire, which is described as a matte terracotta. This is a beautiful medium tone orange based brown shade. Pretty nice payoff. Then we have Supernova. This is described as a sparkly emerald green. I'll layer this one up a bit because it's one of the crystal sparkly special shades. And it is beautiful. It's a deep emerald green. It has a blackened base and tons and tons of shimmer. Really gorgeous. Then we have Dark Paradise, which is described as a newer tinged brick red. Nor tinge, does that mean it's blackened? It just looks like a dark brown with a red tint to it. Then we have Corruption, which is described as a bronzed burgundy. This one was a little chunky to pick up on the brush, but look at that, oh my god, it is like a golden cranberry shade. Do you see that shift? It's really metallic and beautiful. That's a really unique shade. Then we have Provactix which is described as a golden bronze duochrome. This to me is like a peachy rose base with a golden sheen to it. I don't know, it's different, it's unique, but it's it doesn't look that pretty on my skin, but it's a fun shade. 
And here you have those six shades swatched. I actually do like this collection of shades. There are two mattes in this palette along with three special shades. This is a fun palette if you want to try out more of the special shades because there are three included in this palette and they're really pretty, especially the coppery bronze shade and the green. Really gorgeous and you get two mattes to play with as well. Now we're moving on to the last palette, which is the Mothership Subversive Metal Morphosis Eyeshadow Palette. It says, manifest metallurgic masterpieces with a provocative palette of mesmerizing metals ranging from the illicitly incendiary gold, silver, copper, and bronze to the luridly lustrous smoked amethyst and gilded pewter. So we're starting off with the first shade, which is Metallurgy, which, as you guessed it, is a metallic forged gold. I think we can guess by now what the first shade of most of these palettes are going to be. It's going to be a gold or a champagne. But here you have it. It's really smooth. It's a really pretty color. It's just so repetitive by this point. Then we have Copper. I think Coppers are second in the run-in for... Pat McGrath's favorite shades. This one is an RNG based copper shade. Next up we have Sterling which is a ultra metallic silver. This is a repeat from the Decadence palette. So if you missed out on that silver, we have it here again. It's a muted foil silver shade. It's really beautiful, really pigmented. Can't say much more of it, we've already swatched it. Then we have Smoked Amethyst which is described as a pearlized purple obsidian. This to me is a black base. There's shimmer and glitter to it, but it's definitely more of a blackened base. I don't see like a purple base to it, but it's really beautiful. It's smoky, it's interesting, it's different. And then we have bronze, another favorite shade of Pat McGrath. This is described as a blazing metallic bronze. This is another coppery bronze shade. This is like a bright orangey gold. It's really beautiful, but again, we've seen similar shades in the other palette. And then the final shade is Gold Standard, which is a gleaming 24 karat gold. This is another repeat from the Decadence palette, which is Mothership number four. If you missed out on that palette, here's your chance to get the limited edition shade. It's a bright yellow gold. It's really beautiful, really metallic really gorgeous to look at but again we've seen it before so if you have the decadence palette you're going to end up repeating two of these shades in this palette so here you have it here are the six shades from the final palette i think you may love this palette if you're a collector if you're big on metallic shades so like a silver a gold a bronze a copper if this is what you're into you may love this palette. It's a palette that you're definitely gonna need to pair with other palettes because there are no mattes here. I don't know that this palette is the one that most people would get the most use out of because it's an accent palette. You're gonna need to pair it with something else. And most of these shades you're not gonna necessarily use all together. So it's a collector's item. It's not necessarily one that I would recommend you run out and get because you're probably not gonna get the use that you would need to justify getting this palette. Now let's go ahead and do a little breakdown of these palettes and go through the shades that are repeated in different palettes as well as the shades that are available as singles in the new Idols collection. As a key, I'm going to use a pink highlight to show the shades that are repeated in different palettes and then I'll use the yellow highlight to indicate the shades that are available as singles. So first up we have Mothership 1 Subliminal. The shade that is repeated in this palette is Extreme Black, which is that matte black shade. And it's repeated in the first three Mothership 10 pan palettes. So you'll see it in Mothership 1, 2, and 3. In Mothership 2 Sublime, we have two shades that are repeated. Again, we have that Extreme Black shade, which is the matte black as well as one of the special crystal shades, which is Astral Ghost Orchid. This is the white shade with the pink duochrome. This one is repeated in Mothership 3 Subversive. So in Mothership 3 Subversive, like I mentioned, there are the two repeat shades, the Extreme Black, that's in all three of the first Mothership palettes, as well as that Astral Ghost Orchid, which is that crystal shade. It's interesting that this shade was repeated 
in two of the palettes as well as having that extreme black being repeated in all three of the first three palettes. In the Mothership 4 Decadence palette, which was a limited edition holiday release for early 2019, we have two repeat shades that show up in one of the abbreviated Mothership palettes. This is Gold Standard and Sterling, which are available in the Mothership Subversive Metal Morphosis palette. And three of the shades are available as singles as well. One of those shades happen to be one of the repeat shades, which is Gold Standard. And then the other shades that are available as singles is Lapis Luxury and Divine Mink. In Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction, there are no repeat shades or shades that are available as singles. And the same can be said for the newest Mothership palette number 6, which is Midnight Sun. There are no repeat shades or single shades in this palette. Then we have the three abbreviated six pan eyeshadow palettes that are companion palettes to the original three Mothership 10 pan eyeshadow palettes. Starting out, we have the companion palette to Mothership Subliminal, which is the Mothership Subliminal Platinum Bronze palette. There are three shades in this palette that are available as singles. We have Telepathic Taupe, Deep Velvet, and Sextrovert. Then in the companion palette for Mothership Sublime, we have Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition. There are no shades in this palette that are repeat shades in other palettes or available as singles. Moving on to the companion palette for Mothership Subversive, which is the Mothership Subversive La Vie en Rose, we have two shades in this palette that are available as singles. We have Purple Rain and Pale Fire. Then we have three limited edition abbreviated six pan eyeshadow palettes which follow the same theme of being companion palettes to the three original Mothership 10 pan palettes. So first up of course we have the companion palette from Mothership 1 Subliminal which is Mothership Subliminal Dark Star. This has one shade available as a single and that is the shade Enraptured. Then we have the second palette, which is the companion palette to Mothership 2 Sublime, and that is the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette, and that includes one shade that is available as a single, and that is the shade Celestial. The companion palette for Mothership 3 Subversive is Mothership Subversive Metal Morphosis, and this contains a repeat shade, as I mentioned before, that's Sterling, which is a silver shade that is also found in Mothership 4. For Decadence, which is a limited edition holiday palette, and then we have Gold Standard, which is available as a single, but it is also a repeat shade from the same Mothership for Decadence palette. So let's go ahead and jump into some comparisons. Of course, with this many palettes, there are bound to be crossover shades, and Auntie Pat loves to do very similar shades in some of her palettes, especially her bronzes and browns. So I wanted to go ahead and show you shades across the palettes that you might see as similar, or you just want to see swatched up against each other. So I'm gonna start out with the astral shades from all the palettes. The astral shades only show up in the Mothership 10 Pan Eyeshadow palettes. These are special shades for those palettes. So we'll start out with the first one, which is from Mothership 1 Subliminal. This one is more of a shimmery white base with a blue shift to it. Then we have the shade Astral Ghost Orchid, which is the same in the Mothership 2 Sublime and the Mothership 3 Subversive. So this is the same shade in both palettes, which I found interesting that she would choose to repeat one of the special shades in two of the first three palettes that she released. It made no sense because if you bought all three, now you have three black shades that are the same, and then two of the special astral shades. The next one up is Astral Luna Gold, which is from the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction palette. This one is a beautiful yellow gold. And then from the Midnight Sun palette, which is Astral Solstice. This one is more of a platinum silvery shimmer. So here you have those six astral shades. As you can see, they're a little bit different except for the two repeat shades. Another signature shade from her palettes are the skin tone shades. So she has a skin tone shade in five of the Mothership 10 pan palettes. So the first one is from Mothership 1 Subliminal. This is Skin Show Nude, which is more of a champagne. Then from Mothership 2 Sublime, we have Skin Show Glow which is more of a pinky undertone. And then from Mothership 3 Subversive, we have Skin Show Fever, 
which is another goldy champagne shade. It's a little bit more yellow peachy gold than Skin Show Nude. And then from Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction, we have Skin Show Divine Glow, which is very similar to Skin Show Fever from Mothership 3 Subversive. They're similar shades. This one is just slightly lighter of a champagne. And then from Mothership 6 Midnight Sun, we have Skin Show Moon Glow. This one is more of a light, very icy, peachy shade. So here's an up-close view of those shades. I think these shades pretty much are interchangeable. If you have all the palettes, you would probably use the shades in the same way. They're just very light, icy champagne shades. The only shade that looks significantly different is this one with the pink undertone from the Sublime palette. So here we have a look at the dark browns from the palettes. There tends to be a dark brown in each of the palette selections, something that you can use to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of smokiness to a look. Now in the first three Mothership palettes, the original 10 pan palettes, there is a black that is repeated through all of the palettes. I'm not gonna swatch those three because they're literally the same matte black shades. So apart from those, these are the other deep shades in the palettes. So we're gonna start out with Mothership One Subliminal. This is the shade Depth, which is a gray toned dark deep brown. Then we have from the Mothership Two Sublime palette, this is dark, which is a rich, warm brown. This one is a little bit more on the warm tone side. As you can see, it has a little bit of a purpley red undertone. Then we have Deep Shade from Mothership Subversive. This one is more of a reddened tone brown, but these two are very similar. And then we have these two shades from Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. The dark brown shade is Disobedient, and then we have this dark eggplant shade, which is Extreme Aubergine. Pat uses Extreme to describe her really deep blackened matte shades. What I like about this palette is that there are two options for deepening shades and there is no black, so I really like the options here. Then we have the two deep matte shades from Mothership 6, which is Midnight Sun. I swatched the deep red shade so you can see that she includes darker shades but they're not necessarily always a brown. This will definitely stand out as more red against the browns that are swatched here. So this is Vermilion Venom which is a dark reddened shade which I really like. I like the blendability of this. And then we have Extreme Dusk. Again, another extreme shade to represent a blackened, darkened shade. So this one is more of a neutral gray tone brown as you can see. Then we have two dark browns from the smaller six pan palettes, the abbreviated ones. So the very first one is from Mothership Subliminal Platinum Bronze. This goes with the Mothership One Subliminal Palette. So this one looks very similar to the other red and brown shades here. So it's nothing special or different. This one is called Deep Velvet. It's also available as a single. So if you're interested in grabbing one of the dark mattes from her collection, this is the one she chose to promote as a single. And then you have the dark brown matte from one of the Holiday Limited Edition Six Pan Palettes. So this one is from the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette. This one is Dark Paradise, which is more of a rosy dark brown. So here again is a look at all the dark brown shades in the palette, except for this one, but these are the deepening, more smoky tones in each of the palettes. Now let's go ahead and look at the blue tones in the palette. Some of these might shift a little bit purple, but they're more on the blue side, so I decided to swatch them all together. So first up we have the blue palette from the bunch. This is Mothership One Subliminal. So we have VR Violet, which is meant to be a violet shade, but you can see it shifts a little bit blue as well because it is a VR shade, so it has that multi-chrome to it. And then of course we have Blitz Blue, which is the rich, beautiful sapphire color. I love that shade. Then we skip down to Mothership 3 Subversive. This one is Blitz Amethyst. Again, it's more purple, but it shifts blue with the duochrome. It's a really gorgeous color. Then we have two shades from Mothership 4 Decadence. This was the limited edition holiday palette. 
So we have Lapis Luxury, which is meant to be a turquoise, but you can see it's very blue and absolutely beautiful. It's also available as a single. And then we have Underworld. This is meant to be a deep metallic matte, according to them. It's more like a deep navy shade. And then the last one up is from one of the limited edition six pan palettes. This is subliminal dark star and the shade here is interstellar which is a metallic blue but it has that purple shift to it so these shades as you can see are very beautiful they have that blue undertone a little bit of a purple shift as well but these shades are done really well and there's no real overlapping shade here so if you're into blue she doesn't do a lot of blues but when she does a blue she does it well so I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the greens and golds swatched together because I feel like her golds have a little hint of a green undertone but for sure the most impressive green is from Mothership 2 Sublime this is Blitz Emerald this is a beautiful shimmery emerald green. It's really gorgeous. And then the next greeny looking shade comes in Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. This one is VR Fire Opal, which is mentioned as a shift in chartreuse. So you'll see a little bit of green reflex to this, but this is one of the VR shades, which is a special shade. And then we have the shade from Midnight Sun, Wicked Ivory. This is more of a dirty olive green and you can see it's not really green up against the other shades. And then this dark green which looks a little bit teal is from one of the limited edition six pen palettes. So this one is from the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette. It's super nova. It's a sparkling emerald green but as you can see it's a really dark like rich almost like a Christmas green. It's a Christmas tree green because it's not really an emerald when compared to the first shade here. Now here are the golds from the palette. So we have Mothership 1 Subliminal. This one is Pale Gold 002. It's a shimmery light gold shade, really beautiful. And then from Mothership 2 we have Bronze 005. I wanted to show this one because it's a gold but it's definitely more of an orangey undertone to me. Then from Mothership 3 Subversive we have Gigabyte which is meant to be a green gold. That one is really intense and beautiful as well. Then from Decadence that's Mothership 4 we have Gold Standard which is a yellow gold and we also have that repeated in Mothership Subversive Metamorphosis. This one was the limited edition holiday palette, so these two shades are the same, and this is available as a single. And last up, this one is from one of the limited edition six pan palettes from Holiday. It's the Subliminal Dark Star Eyeshadow Palette, and this shade is Enraptured, which is also available as a single, and it's more of a peachy gold. So here you go if you wanted to take a more up-close look at these shades. Okay, so while we're at it, let's look at the lavenders, the purples, and the pinks in the palettes. So first up, we have two shades from Mothership 1 Subliminal. This one is Lilac Dusk, which is a muted lavender. It's a beautiful purpley shade, but as you can see, it's very muted. And then, of course, we have VR Violet, which we swatched with the blues, but you can see it up against the purples now. You can definitely see the purple undertones to it. Then from Mothership 3 Subversive, we have Night Creature. This one is more of a purpley magenta shade. And then we also have VR Pink, which is more of a peachy pink with a gold pearl. That one is definitely pink up against the other shades. And then the next purple shade we see is from Mothership 6 Midnight Sun. This one is Blitz Violet Orchid. So this one is like a deep, dirty lavender shade. It's a little bit more amped up than this lavender, so you can definitely see more purple. Mothership Subversive Lavienne Rose is when we really saw the pinks, as you would expect from such a name, right? And this is one of the six pan palettes. So this pink shade here is Rose Risqué, which is a bright pink shade. It's a satin shade. I don't really love the texture of the shade, and I really didn't love the payoff. We also have Paranormal, which is more of a plum shade. This is more of a muted lavender. And then of course, we have Purple Rain, which is a bright, vivid purple. This one is also available as a single. In the limited edition holiday version of this palette, which is Subversive Metamorphosis, 
We got a blackened purple as well. This one is smoked amethyst. It's more of a rich dark base with purple glitter to it. But here's a look at how Mother does her purples, lavenders, and pinks. Are you ready for Mother's favorite shade? Pat McGrath loves her bronzes and medium toned shimmery nude shades. And there are a lot of them in these palettes. So we're gonna go ahead and start it off. First up we have the shade Iconic from Mothership 2 Sublime, which is just a medium toned bronze. Then from Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction we have the shade Guilty Pleasure which is just a bronzed taupe. Then from Mothership 6 Midnight Sun, we have Bronze Eclipse. This one is a lighter bronze shade. Then moving on to the Six Pan Palette, which is where we really get the bronzes, we have Subliminal Platinum Bronze Palette. We have two shades. This one is Sextrovert, which is available as a single, and of course Telepathic Taupe, which is that medium tone grayish taupe shade. Then from Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition we have three shades. We have a Champagne Golden Sheen. This is Guilt Trip. Then we have the shade Bronze Struck which is a warm bronze shade. And then Gold Rush which is more of a golden bronze. This is from Mothership Subversive La Vienne Rose. It's the shade Gold Nectar which is more of a golden bronze. Then from Mothership Subliminal Dark Star we have two shades. We have Entice which is a gleaming gold and Enraptured which is a metallic bronzy gold shade. From Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation we have two shades as well. We have Celestial, which is more of a light champagne bronze, and then Provocatix, which is more of a golden bronze with a dual chrome to it. And then last up from the subversive metamorphosis, we have Metallurgy. This one is more of a golden bronze. So all these bronzes are slightly different, so you're not necessarily getting crossover shades, but you can get very similar looks and you're going to find yourself repeating the same look over and over again, especially if you have all these palettes, because the shades look very similar. But it's a shade that Pat does really well, and even though they're close, I don't see that they're necessarily duplicate shades in this lineup. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the shades from these palettes that are now available as singles in the Eye Dolls Single Eyeshadow Collection from Pat McGrath. So first up, we have three shades from the Mothership 4 Decadence palette. So this was the holiday palette. It was limited edition. So these three shades have been re-promoted as singles. So we have Gold Standard, which is a rich yellow gold. Lapis Luxury, which is the multi-dimensional turquoise, really beautiful shade. And Divine Mink, which is a frosted gray-brown sheen. I think all these shades are beautiful and it's great that she released these as singles since they were only available in the limited edition holiday palette. Then from the Six Pan Mothership Subliminal Platinum Bronze Eyeshadow Palette, we have three shades as well that are available as singles. We have Telepathic Taupe. This one is a glittering gray shade. This one is not as beautiful as Divine Mink. I think between the two I'd go for Divine Mink. Then we have the shade Deep Velvet which is that matte deep brown shade. This one is a great matte shade so I think this one was a great choice from that palette. We have Sextrovert as well which is more of a metallic bronze and this is a beautiful bronze shade but just be mindful that these three are in that palette in case you were looking at them in the singles. From another six pan palette this is the Subversive La Vienne Rose collection so we have two shades from that that are available as singles. We have Purple Rain which is this bright vivid purple and I do agree that this should be available as a single. We also have Pale Fire which is a peachy pink duochrome. Also a really great shade to have available as a single. Then last up we have from the limited edition holiday six pan palettes we have Enraptured which is a metallic gold. Another great one to be available as a single. And Celestial which is from the Sublime Bronze Temptation palette which is just a luminous champagne. Another great choice. Mothership Subversive Metamorphosis also has Gold Standard, which was from the Decadence palette, so that is also in the limited edition Subversive Metamorphosis eyeshadow palette in case you have that one. So here you have all the shades that are now available as single swatched on my arm. There are 10 repeat shades from the palettes, so if you have the palettes and you're thinking about picking up the singles, just be mindful of which ones would be repeat shades.
All right, guys, so we've gone through a ton of swatches, a ton of shade comparisons. We've done the palette breakdown. Now let's go ahead and jump into the review, and this is gonna be pretty quick for me. I'm not gonna dwell too much on the review portion of this video, and if you wanna see what my favorite palettes are and how I would rank them, then I will link a video over here for you to check out, as well as link it down below in the description box. But let's go ahead and speak about the pricing, which is probably the one thing that stands out about Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes. So by now you know that the larger Mothership eyeshadow palettes retail for $125 and these include 10 shades. Now when you go through the different palettes, they have different sizing. So for instance, the latest palette, which is number 6, this says it contains 10 times 1.32 grams of eyeshadow. So each of the eyeshadow pans are 1.32 grams or 0 0.047 ounces, which is less than a small eyeshadow on the market. So think of the MAC eyeshadows. These are 0 0.05 ounces. So you're getting a little bit less than this in each of these eyeshadow pans. And that's going to give you a breakdown of $12.50 per eyeshadow shade in this palette. Now in other palettes, like I mentioned, the sizing is different. So for instance, in the Mothership 3 Subversive palette, we have six shades that are 1.2 gram or 0 0.042 ounces. Again, less than a small eyeshadow. But then you also have four that are 1.5 grams or 0 0.053 ounces, which are larger than a typical eyeshadow. And those are the special shades. The smaller abbreviated Mothership six pan eyeshadow palettes retail for $65. And they used to be, because I have to point this out, $55. When I purchased these last holiday and when I purchased the original ones, they were $55 a piece. So within a year, she's increased the price by $10. Now these contain a net weight of 12 grams or 0.42 ounces, which breaks down to two grams per eyeshadow or 0 0.07 ounces a piece. So that means you're getting quite a lot more product in these individual pans than you do in the 10 pan palettes because it's almost double the size. So remember, these are 0 0.07 ounces, these are 0 0.042 ounces. So you're getting quite a lot more in these eyeshadows and if you do the breakdown, they're gonna be $10.83 a piece. So you're also spending less per ounce for these eyeshadows. Now I'm not here to debate with you whether or not these eyeshadow palettes are worth your money because at the end End of the day $125 for a single 10 pan eyeshadow palette is quite a lot and even for the six pan eyeshadow palettes you're getting tons of product but it's still $65 so it's quite a chunk of money to spend on simple eyeshadows that you're placing on your eyes I don't care how special the shades are I don't care how much product you're getting none of that really matters to me because at the end of the day if we're really honest these eyeshadow palettes are extremely overpriced. You're not paying for the product. You're not paying for the packaging, no matter what anyone says. You're paying for the name. You're paying for the prestige of using a Pat McGrath palette. You're paying for that luxurious feel. Yes, the quality is there. Yes, they're beautiful. But at the end of the day, just know that you are paying for the name. And it is up to you whether or not you value that luxury. If you value that prestige of owning and using a Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette and whether or not it is within your means. I do not think anybody should go out of their way to purchase these eyeshadow palettes, but if you have the means and you want to go ahead and experience the luxury and the prestige of having a Pat McGrath palette, then I don't think you will be disappointed. Now let's go ahead and talk about the packaging because I think everyone can agree that Pat McGrath has beautiful, luxurious packaging. Her 10 pan eyeshadow palettes come in these beautiful artistic cardboard boxes with beautiful designs. Oh my God, I can't get over the artwork for these palettes. They're edgy while still being couture. It definitely gives you a vibe of high fashion and luxury. So I love the box packaging and I even keep them to keep my palettes in. So the packaging is top notch for me. Inside you have the Black Seek Lacquered Finish Palette, which is very heavy. A lot of people will say that as well. Now weight can be deceptive because a lot of luxury brands will add weight to their palettes to give you that luxurious feel. So don't be fooled by that. Yes, the plastic itself is sleek. It feels heavy duty. It does feel like high quality plastic, but that doesn't mean that's where the palette is getting that weight from. They've added something extra in here to make it feel that much heavier. 
and the mirror is also going to add to that weight and I think this mirror is beautiful it's a beveled design and it comes with a protective sheet over it. it's high clarity it's a beautiful mirror so you're definitely getting a quality mirror in here I keep the plastic covering over it because I don't use the mirror in a palette anyway so I like to keep it nice and sleek and then the eyeshadows are just laid out in two rows of five with the special shades at one end of the palette. What I will say is as you use these eyeshadows, especially the special shades, they do get flaky and they can get all over the palette. So these are a little bit tricky to keep clean. The only problem is some of those flakes can get into your matte shades and transfer shimmer so you won't get a fully matte shadow anymore. But that's not that big a deal to me. On the back you have a brushed old gold finish. It looks like a metal plate but it's not. It's still plastic. It just has that metallic look to it. The Pat McGrath logos are embossed into this finish. On this specific palette you have have a clear label that indicates the manufacturing details and that this is Mothership 5. It also has an open jar symbol of 18 months so that is the intended shelf life. There are no shade names in the palette which a lot of people do complain about. The shade names are instead included on a cardboard printout in the palette box itself. It doesn't fit within the palette. It's not a clear insert. It's black heavyweight cardboard with gold lettering indicating each of the shade names. I don't have a major problem with that because I feel like with a luxury brand it cheapens the palette a little bit when you add shade names you're just fitting in with the regular Schmegler Too Faced and Urban Decay when you do that Dior Chanel Gucci they don't have shade names on their palette absolutely not why would you put a bumper sticker on a Bentley after all right so including the shade names on an insert is kind of a compromise keeping up with the trendiness of having eyeshadow names while still maintaining the luxurious feel of her packaging. So I don't think that will ever change no matter how much we fuss about it on social media. I don't think that would ever change and I don't think it needs to change either. The original release of the 10 pen eyeshadow palettes do not even have the palette number on them but the newer releases so Mothership 5 and 6 do have the number on the palette itself on that clear label. As far as the six pan eyeshadow palettes go, they don't come in the sleek black packaging. These instead come in cardboard packaging that is reminiscent of the packaging that the larger palettes come in, but instead of having a removable palette, they actually have the eyeshadows in the cardboard packaging itself against a black shiny background and some people didn't find this packaging as luxurious as the original palettes because it is after all cardboard it's a little bit cheaper it feels a little bit more flimsy and I agree it does include a nice mirror as well and these have a clear insert instead to fit over the eyeshadows in the palette and there are more details on the back of these palettes including all the manufacturing details, the ingredients, the size and information and the open jar symbol which for these is 12 months. These have a little bungee cord that keep them closed and when you purchase them there's a little seal that you have to cut to open the palette. So you are getting an untouched, unused palette. But these I can agree that they lost the luxurious feel with these but I still think they're really beautiful because the artwork, the details, it's still really beautiful. But yeah, it's a little bit cheaper and to show you how cheap they are, I have one palette that fell apart. This flap on the packaging actually ripped off so I'm going to need to glue this in place and I would have done that already but I wanted to show you that these palettes are a little bit more flimsy, they do come apart but it's something that I can easily fix with some crazy glue. Another thing that I wanted to mention about these palettes and these are not just the six pan palettes, also the larger palettes. The pans are glued in, they're not magnetized, so don't think you're going to depot them and have magnetized palettes. They are secured by glue and the glue is not necessarily the strongest because I've had eyeshadow pans pop out of multiple of the palettes, not just one. They've come out and I've had to re-glue them into the packaging, which I find to be a defect that shouldn't be happening with such a high price point. Something I wanted to note, but overall I think the packaging is beautifully done and I like the packaging, but 
I don't think overall the packaging warrants the price point. Now let's get into the purchasing of these palettes. They are available exclusively for sale through Sephora.com and in select Sephora stores, as well as through the Pat McGrath Labs website. Now the one thing I wanted to note is that on Pat McGrath's website there is always a sale going on it seems. I actually purchased all my Pat McGrath palettes at a discount. There was no way I was going to pay full price. $125? Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. So I lucked out and got the 25% off coupon that was available during the holidays last year to get the majority of my palettes. You can also use your 20% or 15% off during the Sephora VIB and BI sales that seem to be happening more frequently now and there is also a sign-on discount that you can use through patmcgrath.com that is either 10% or 15% and as I said there are always sales going on for some reason so just keep an eye out for coupons in case you wanted to try and get these yourself definitely buy them on a coupon they're not worth the full retail price and there are bundles also available, which is how I got my set of the three original palettes as well as the three holiday palettes. I bought them in a set as well as used the coupon discount. So I got them at a much better price. So this is just something that you have to shop around and feel out and just wait for the right moment to jump the gun. But don't jump it too fast because there is always a sale happening. Now with all that being said, what is the most critical thing we need to talk about? The product and the performance. As you could see from the swatches, these are beautiful eyeshadows. They apply really well. They are very pigmented and the shimmery shades, the special shades are absolutely beautiful. There is no discounting that. Pat McGrath has a beautiful formula. And in practice, in application, they apply really well and blend out beautifully. The thing that I found though with the regular shimmer shades, the metallic shades, I tend to have to use a denser, stiffer synthetic brush to pick up the eyeshadow. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get them onto my brush. If you apply them with a finger, you will have absolutely no issue. They apply beautifully to the lids. Even the special shades that are a little bit more flaky, a little bit more glittery, still apply well to the lids, but I recommend using a sticky primer to ensure that you get great adhesion and you won't get as much fallout from the shades if you apply them over a sticky primer. And the best way to apply these would be with your finger. And there's just something about luxury makeup, Charlotte Tilbury, Tom Ford, they just require you to use your finger, the warmth of your fingertips to apply these to get the best bang. And that is not something I necessarily like to mess around with, so I do use a stiff synthetic brush to get decent color payoff. And then I also use a sticky primer. Now the other thing that I wanted to mention is that with the shimmer shades, so just the basic shimmer shades, I feel like I have to use them damp for them to really pop on my lids and to really give me the payoff that I'm looking for. And I don't necessarily have to do that with all my shimmer eyeshadow formulas, like the ones from indie brands. Like with my Give Me Glow or Sydney Grace eyeshadows, I don't necessarily have to use those damp to get full impact. But with these Pat McGrath shades, I feel like you do, if you wanna get that punch, you do need to apply them damp or with your finger. And that may be intentional because with luxury makeup, people aren't necessarily going for the Instagram look. People are going for a more sophisticated finish on the lids. They're just trying to get a nice wash of color, not necessarily like high metallic shine. So I do understand the reasoning behind the formulation, but once you get them on, even if they're like low impact or full impact, they blend easily, they move around beautifully, they're really gorgeous, and they aren't prone to fade in throughout the day. I can wear these all day and they still look like I just applied them. So I do think the quality is there, the performance is there, they blend beautifully, they apply nicely. The one thing I will say with like the special shades, the glittery shades, be careful because you will get fallout initially and you can get fallout throughout the day, which isn't a big deal to me because it's not falling all over my face and I can just apply my foundation after to minimize the impact of that fallout so just keep that in mind when you're going through application but overall I do think the performance is there the quality is there they are definitely a great formulation the mattes are amazing the shimmers are great the special shades are amazing they look beautiful 
they are a little bit different from anything else you can find on the market. You have similar things from indie brands, I'm not gonna lie, but there's just something to these special shades that you can't quite replicate across the board in any other brand. There's just something Pat McGrath has going for her that is really special. So I do think they're great. I think they're beautiful. The price point, it's overpriced. At the end of the day, you're paying for the name, you are paying for the experience, and if that's up your alley, if that's in your budget, go for it. You're not gonna be disappointed. At least I have not been disappointed. Yeah, I think they're overpriced, but I'm still happy I have them in my collection. So again, I'm gonna leave all the details down below in the description box, timestamps, all that. I will also leave the videos that I mentioned down below linked as well, so you can check those out. And I will leave links as well to my Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat where you should be following me along. And now I can finally shut up and end this video because it has been a long one. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.